From genetics, we know that a gene is nothing more than the sequence of nucleotides found on our DNA. And these genes basically code for specific types of proteins. And once the proteins are produced, the proteins can either interact with other genes or the proteins can be used to basically produce some type of trait to express some type of phenotype characteristics of the adult individual. Now, in this lecture, we're going to focus on two important phenomena that exist in genetics. We're going to discuss a concept, a phenomenon known as pleiotropy, and we're also going to look at epistasis. So, let's begin by describing what pleiotropy is. So, pleiotropy is the process by which a pair of alleles on a single locus on some homologous chromosome affects expression of more than one type of trait, of many different types of trait. And to see exactly what we mean by that, let's consider albino individuals. So in albino individuals, it's a single pair of genes at some particular locus that actually affects the expression of three different types of characteristics of three different types of phenotype traits. So number one, lack of pigment hair, uh, lack of pigment in the hair. Number two, lack of pigment in the eyes. And number three, lack of pigment in the skin. These three different types of phenotype traits are expressed as a result of a single locus. Remember, in any diploid organism, such as humans, every single chromosome comes with a homologous pair. So, in this particular case, we have this chromosome number one, and this is the homologous chromosome to this chromosome number one. And because they're homologous, what that means is they carry similar genes that code for the same exact trait or traits. And in this particular case, we have three different traits. So we have allele number one shown in red and allele number two also shown in red. And it's the pair of alleles found at this particular locus. So this is the locus. The locus is simply the location on our chromosome pair. It's this single locus that affects the expression of many different types of traits. And that's exactly what pleiotropy is. So a single gene or a pair of genes on a single locus affects many different types of phenotype characteristics, and this is known as pleiotropy. Now, what about epistasis? Well, in many cases, a gene creates a protein that goes on to a second gene, and that protein affects the expression of that second gene, and this process can continue until some type of trait is actually expressed. And this is what we call epistasis. So in many cases, a gene at one locus produces a protein that goes on to a second locus and affects the expression of that gene at that second locus. And this is known as epistasis. And in epistasis, two or more pairs of alleles at different loci basically affect a single trait. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following example. So this is a simple case of epistasis. So we have homologous chromosome pair number one. So we have gene number one and it's homologous gene number two. So we have our set of alleles. So these alleles basically express or produce some type of protein. And the protein goes on onto a second different locus. So this is locus number one, and this is a different locus number two. And the protein goes on to the second locus and either inhibits or expresses the, the protein that is coded by these purple genes here. So allele pair number one, allele pair number two at a different locus, and so now the protein produced can either go on and either inhibit or express other alleles, or it can go on to actually express that single trait. So this is what we mean by epistasis. In pleiotropy, it's a single locus, a single set of allele pair 
that basically expresses many different types of traits. But an epistasis, it's the interaction between different allele pairs at different loci that ultimately produces or expresses or controls the expression of a single trait. Now, recalling our discussion on embryological development and embryology, we said that when the zygote is formed, the zygote begins to develop into the adult organism. And when the zygote undergoes embryological development, this is a very important process that takes place. Because during embryological development, we have one gene can interact with the second gene, which interacts with the third gene, and this process can continue until we express that particular type of trait. Now, embryology is a rather complicated case because we have many, many, many different types of interactions. We're going to look at a much simpler case in this lecture. We're going to discuss how dogs basically pass down their coat color. So another relatively simple example of epistasis is the inheritance of coat colors in certain types of dogs. So in certain dogs, we have two different allele pairs at two different loci that ultimately determine the expression of some particular color trait. Uh, the code color trait. So to designate uh, these different types of allele pairs, we're going to use the letter D to designate one allele pair and the letter B to designate the second allele pair. So let's begin by supposing that we have a dog that is homozygous dominant. So let's suppose our dog is homozygous dominant for our D gene. And so we have uppercase D, uppercase D. In this particular case, what happens is we're going to have a dark coat color. But there are two possibilities. We can either have a light brown color, so a chocolate color, or we can have a black color. So we have a lighter coat and we have a darker coat. Now, the chocolate coat or the black coat depends on the second gene type. So if we have uppercase D, uppercase D, and we have, let's say, uppercase B, uppercase B, so if we have a homozygous dominant for D, and we have a homozygous dominant for the B, then we're going to produce a black coat color. And likewise, if we have a homozygous dominant for D and a heterozygous for B, so at least one of it is dominant, we're still going to produce the color black. But if we have a homozygous dominant and a homozygous recessive for the B gene, then we're going to produce a lighter color. We're going to produce a brown or chocolate coat color. And the same thing is true for the heterozygous. If we have a heterozygous for our D gene, so if at least one of these is a dominant gene, then we're going to produce a darker coat color. And the options are either chocolate or a black coat color. And once again, if we have heterozygous and a homozygous recessive, then we're going to produce a chocolate color. But if we have a heterozygous either and either this one or this one, so let's suppose this one, if we have these two, then we produce a black coat color. If we have this and this, then we produce a black coat color. So we see that different types of possibilities create different types of coat colors. Now, in this particular case, so we see that if we have either a homozygous dominant or a heterozygous for the G gene, we're always going to produce a dark coat color, either black or chocolate. And these depend on the second type of gene. But if we have a homozygous recessive, for the D gene. So if both of these alleles on this homologous chromosome pair are lowercase d's, if they're recessive, then it doesn't matter what the second type of gene phenotype is, we're always going to produce a light coat color, we're going to produce the yellow coat color. So if 
Both of these D genes are recessive if they're lowercase d's. No matter what we're going to have in this case, we're going to inhibit the production of this, and so we're going to get a light yellow coat color. But if it's either homozygous dominant or heterozygous for D, then because we have the presence of at least one uppercase D, that means we're going to have a darker color. And the type or the shade of the dark color depends on if we have at least one of these uppercase Bs. If we don't have an uppercase Bs on either one of these two chromosomes, we produce a chocolate color, but if we have at least one uppercase B, so here or here, then we produce a black coat color. So this is an example of epistasis. Why? Well, because we have an interaction of at least two different pairs of alleles at two different loci that ultimately affect a single trait. And in this particular case, the trait is the color of that dog's coat. So once again, epistasis is when two or more pairs of alleles at different loci interact with one another to basically produce some type of gene or some type of trait. But pleiotropy is basically the process by which a single locus, a single pair of alleles on a single locus of a homologous chromosome pair basically expresses many different types of traits, phenotype traits, as we discuss in this particular case.